Hello everyone and a warm welcome to St John's Church Colchester online service. I just wish I could see you all, but I remember your smiling faces and try to imagine you with me as we worship today. Many of you will still be smiling. Others will be feeling very sad. Some will be frustrated or angry or anxious. But as we come to meet with our loving Heavenly Father, we know we can trust him to see us through this crisis. So let's turn to him. The Lord our God, the Almighty, reigns. Let us rejoice and shout for joy, giving God the glory. We have come together online in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the worship of God. So let's have some updates. Firstly, if you haven't already, we would inc really encourage you to sign up for the weekly news email. This is the quickest and easiest way we have to get in touch with you. You can do this by going to the church website at www.stjohnscolchester.org.uk and clicking on the link to subscribe. We never share your details with other organisations. The weekly news email includes details of the pastoral phone service, which can take prayer requests, find you a phone buddy and signpost you to additional help if you need it. Secondly, a huge thank you to everyone who donated to the Apollina Food Bank appeal. As of Wednesday morning, just before this was filmed, we have raised just over £7,300, which is amazing, and it will keep them running for several months. We're really grateful for your love and generosity. Thirdly, Alpha starts online this Tuesday evening at 7.30pm. Please email the church office if you'd like to be included. It's completely free. You just need access to Zoom to join in. Next, please go to Facebook and like the North East Colchester Support Network. This is a group set up by St John's and other local churches along with our local councillors to offer support to those who are vulnerable or self-isolating at this time. Whether you'd like to help or you need help, this is the place for you. You'll find further details plus a contact phone number in the comments box under the film. And lastly, click the subscribe button below to get an update when new videos are available. Blessed are those who stay indoors, for they have protected others. Blessed are the unemployed and the self-employed, for their need of God is great. Blessed are the corner shopkeepers, for they are the purveyors of scarce things. Blessed are the delivery drivers and the postal workers, for they are the bringers of essential things. Blessed are the hospital workers, the ambulance crews, the doctors, the nurses, the care assistants and the cleaners. For they stand between us and the grave 
and the kingdom of heaven is surely theirs. Blessed are the checkout workers, for they have patience and fortitude in the face of overwork and frustration. Blessed are the refuse collectors, for they will see God despite the mountains of waste. Blessed are the teachers, for they remain steadfast and constant in disturbing times. Blessed are the church workers, the deacons, priests and bishops, for they are a comforting presence in a hurting world as they continue to signpost towards God. Blessed are the single parents, for they are coping alone with their responsibilities and there is no respite. Blessed are those who are alone, for they are children of God and with him they will never be lonely. Blessed are the bereaved, for whom the worst has already happened. They shall be comforted. Blessed are those who are isolated with their abusers. For one day, we pray, they will know safety. Blessed are all during this time who have pure hearts. All who still hunger and thirst for justice. All who work for peace and who model mercy. May you know comfort. May you know calm. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Hello, I'm Rachel and... I'm Moika. And we're going to tell you a story about... And our next to mummy is Stevie Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, we're going to tell you a story today about... Who can tell a story Paul. about? Paul. What was his name before he was Paul? Saul. Saul. Okay. What do you know about Saul? He was really... Bad. And... Good. He was really bad and then he became... Good. Good. Yeah. Okay. When did he become good? Um, when, when they changed his name. When Who changed his name? God. God. Yeah. When Jesus met him and changed his name. Yeah. Okay, do you want to listen to the story then? Well, am I going about to play? Okay. We draw one card. Okay, Saul was not a follower of Jesus. He did not know Jesus, he hated Jesus. But God was with Saul just the same. Saul was on his way to Damascus, a big town where lots of friends of Jesus lived. I'll get rid of them, he thought. I'll put them all in prison and stop them talking about Jesus. But God wanted Saul to be his friend just the same. Off he marched, sorry, off marched Saul with some other men. Suddenly a bright light flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice that said, Saul, why are you trying to hurt me? It was Jesus. Go on to Damascus, Jesus said. You'll find out what to do next there. Saul was different now, so different that God had even changed his name. He was now called Paul. Paul. <clears throat> he did not hate Jesus anymore, he loved him. Now he did not want to get rid of Jesus, his, his friends, he wanted to be a friend of Jesus too. Even when Paul hated Jesus, God was with him wanting to be his friend. Imagine Saul's surprise as he was walking along a road and suddenly a bright light turned on and a voice spoke to him. Jesus wanted to show Saul just how powerful he was, so he made Saul blind for three days. Then Jesus sent one of his followers to pray over Saul um, to heal him and from that day on Saul was a follower of Jesus. Saul's story can give us hope too. With Jesus' help, even the most horrible, meanest person you know can become a Christian. So on the um, Facebook ch uh, Church Families group, um, we have put a mask that you can colour in. Um, so one side is Saul um, when he was blind um, and when he was thinking about uh, changing his ways after meeting Jesus. And then the second side is Paul, um, when he's happy and um, going about his um, business 
being Christian. Okay, so you can have a go and we'll look forward to seeing your versions of those. Um, you can turn them into a mask if you want. Okay, um, another part of the story then um, goes on to talk about Barnabas. Um, so Barnabas was another um, another guy in the who, who was around at this time. So there you go, um, in the Bible. Okay, um, so he liked travelling. Um, he sailed across the sea from his home in the island of Cyprus. Um, he went to Jerusalem and God was with him there. Barnabas found out about Jesus and joined the church. He wanted everybody to know about Jesus. So he sold a field he owned and gave all the money to the church leaders. In Jerusalem, Barnabas met Paul. Paul looked sad. The church leaders won't let me join the church, Paul said. They think I still hate him and hate Jesus. Barnabas went to the church leaders. God was with Barnabas and helped him tell the leaders how much Paul now loved Jesus. Paul can join the church, they said. Next, Barnabas went with Paul to another town. God was with Barnabas there. Barnabas and Paul were chosen to go travelling. Everywhere they went, they could tell people about Jesus. Let's go to Cyprus first, said Barnabas. God will be with us wherever we go. enormous boat that kept the birds and animals afloat the Lord was good the Lord was strong and no one lived his life for him Moses led his people through the sea taking them away from slavery the Lord was good, the Lord was strong, and Moses lived his life for him. Oh, oh, oh thank you, oh, thank you, that all through history you were faithful. Thank you, oh, thank you, that you are just the same when it comes to me. When it comes to me David fought Goliath and he won Hurrah! A humble shepherd boy became a king The Lord was good, the Lord was strong And David lived his life for him inside a lion's den but God brought him to safety once again the Lord was good the Lord was strong and Daniel lived his life for him oh to take away our sin so we could get to know our God again the Lord is good the Lord is strong and we will live our lives for him To 
Let's pray. God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let us then show our love for him by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. We say together, God of mercy, we acknowledge that we are all sinners. We turn from the wrong that we have thought and said and done and are mindful of all that we have failed to do. For the sake of Jesus who died for us, forgive us all that is past and help us to live each day in the light of Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of love bring you back to himself, forgive you your sins, and assure you of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us give thanks to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing. Before the world was made, God chose us in Christ, that we might be holy and blameless before him. Let us praise God for the glory of his grace for the free gift he gave us in his dear Son. To Father, Son and Holy Spirit, give praise and dominion, honour and might, for ever and ever. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. T'was grace that saw
Andy, I'm a vicar here at St John's. There's a story which is well known in the Coptic churches of Egypt. In the 10th century, the Caliph of Cairo issued a decree to close all churches of the Coptic Christian community in the land and to forbid the church bells to ring. The churches were closed, the gates grew rusty and the pigeons took residence in the sanctuaries. Some of the faithful Copts travelled across the desert seeking monasteries in the wilderness so that they could meet for prayer and worship. However, the majority of the Copts could not afford to travel. They will have the time to do so on foot to the desert. So they were forced to stay in their homes on Sundays. After nine years, the Caliph decided to see for himself how the Coptic Christians were faring. In disguise, he set out on a Sunday and walked in the streets of their quarters in Old Cairo. As he walked in the narrow streets, he heard the sound of their prayers. Bible readings and worship from every house that he passed. His reaction was another decree. Open their churches and let them pray as they please. I thought I had closed the church in every street only to find out that I opened a church in every house. Friends, it's happening again. It's happening now. Churches springing up in homes and hearts. Through the month of May, we are going to be exploring the book of Acts. And today I want to explore how we can be church during this COVID-19 crisis, how we can find God during lockdown and whether we're living in the end times after all. Let's reach for our Bibles and turn to the book of Acts now for our reading. Good morning. Today's reading is from Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47, the fellowship of the believers. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching 
and to fellowship and to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favour of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Being church is going to be different during this time of lockdown and COVID-19, but fundamentally a church is a group of ordinary people trying to live in a Christ-like way and holding fast to three essential relationships. Firstly, our relationship with God. Here I've got my handy, no expense spared visual aid. Our relationship with God up with up to God. Secondly, our relationship with other followers of Jesus, our in relationship, our relationship with one another. And thirdly, our relationship with the world and its people around us, our out relationship. These three essential relationships are at the heart of what our spirituality as Christians is all about. Faith worked out in everyday life. Firstly, up. Our walking with and being connected to God through our following Jesus. The early church practiced it in verse 42 of that passage, the breaking of bread and prayer. They did so regularly and they did so in homes and they ate together with glad and sincere hearts. They were caught praising God. How can you and me stay connected to God in these times? It's so key that we create or build on a routine of spiritual exercises or spiritual disciplines, building a rule of life, as it were, a rail to hold on to as we stay connected to God. We can understand, all understand, can't we, the feeling of suddenly losing our broadband. It certainly ha happened in our home quite a lot recently. God wants to stay connected to us. Do you know, in March 2020, the number of Google searches for the word prayer multiplied exponentially. Do you know, I've prayed as never before at this present time for my family, for you, our church, for our town, for our leaders, our national leaders. Have you prayed? I wonder, perhaps have you prayed for the first time? You see, we want to be connected to God. And there are many ways of doing this. And I want to encourage you in a way, if perhaps you've been a Christian for a number of years, this time, this sudden change of routine that we're all experiencing is you know, an excuse perhaps to whip up some of the old routines and things we've held fast to and try some new spiritual exercises, some new ways of getting into that secret place with God, that place where you and I meet him personally, powerfully and profoundly, that secret place, that time with him alone. Personally, I've been listening to the free app Lectio 365, which is teaching me how to pray over the next weeks. Do download it today if you haven't got it. It's free and fantastic. I'm trying journaling right now. 
writing my prayers. It certainly keeps me focused and on task with my wandering and distracted mind. I'm listening to great worship as I run and as I walk and as I rest. I'm trying to keep short accounts with God to stop that disconnection, asking myself questions regarding who I might need to forgive, seeing if there's anything in me that's not godly or where I'm holding a worldly perspective about something or someone. You know, God is calling us to live pure and holy lives. And it's in that way that we will shine to the world around us. I'm reading a Tom Wright devotional at the moment on John's gospel, John for everyone, each day. uh, And I'm getting a glimpse each day of what Jesus looks like uh, just by reading a little bit of the gospel each day. And that's, that's how we know what God is like. That's how we know about his love, about his care for us and all of the world by looking at Jesus. I'm reading a book on fasting. I must confess fasting is not my favourite spiritual discipline, but called God's Chosen Fast by Arthur Wallace. It's deeply challenging, but it's a discipline I know that God is wanting to bless as I work at it in my life. And I'm keeping on giving to St John's Colchester as part of my worship. If you want to know more about giving to St John's, well, click on the info below this video. Giving is a vital part of our worship of God. This up relationship is all about knowing God's presence, not just everywhere, but here, right with us by the power of God's Holy Spirit in an evident and real way. There is nothing like knowing you've just encountered the Holy God through Jesus Christ, of knowing his amazing grace his mercy, his comfort, his joy, his strengthening, his forgiveness, a feeling of freedom, a feeling of being truly known and understood. My friends, God is calling us to return to him. He's saying, wake up, wake up, wake up and return to me. I'm really trying to listen to God at the moment. The question is, of course, where is God in this COVID-19 crisis, you may ask? I'll tell you where he is. He is weeping. He is weeping with those who weep. As Jesus wept for his friend Lazarus. In John 11, Jesus stands with those who mourn today, up and down our nation. Those who are desperately anxious for family members, for friends. He stands with you. He's in every ward, beside every bed in the hands of those who turn the COVID-19 patients so they can breathe better in ICU. He's strengthening every NHS worker, every postman and woman who calls on his name. Glimpses of him are seen in the signs of his love and compassion that are being demonstrated in every neighbourhood. He is with us. He's with you. This week, why don't you look for signs of God and his love in the people and the world around you? 
Secondly, our relationship with other believers is vital at this time. Our in relationship, the early church, as you read in Acts 42, Acts, Acts 2 verse 42, devoted themselves to the apostles teaching and to fellowship. They were together, verse 44, and had everything in common. Being church at this time means supporting one another, being accountable to one another, sharing with one another, praying for and blessing one another. Let's not give up the habit of meeting together if we can online. Let's stay in contact with others by uh, in your cluster, your discipleship group, your triplet by Zoom or Skype or by telephone. By texting, contacting one another, listening to each other. Can I encourage us to pray with each other online as we would in church? When we turn and pray with each other, ask God's Holy Spirit to come and pray with each other. Let's punctuate our conversations with fellow believers with, can I pray with you now? Thank you to our cluster leaders and discipleship group leaders who are leading in these times so well. I'm so grateful. And thirdly, our relationship with our world and the people around us, our out, is so key right now. The early church, verse 45, sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. The way the first believers lived and and loved and listened to the world around them so impacted that world that if you read in verse 43, everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. Verse 47, people were amazed and the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Do you know at St. John's we're committed to living generously and I want to thank you for your incredible generosity in giving towards our Apollina food appeal in Romania. Thank you so much. Uh, To date £7,300 has been given. That's not including gift aid. So praise God for all that. What a gift to give away to help those in need. Thank you too for watching our services and passing them to friends and family and colleagues that enables them to be encouraged and to glimpse what we are we get up to when we meet together i've been amazed at the way the five friends i've been praying for on an ongoing basis have become remarkably open to receiving prayer for them and their families people around us are searching for help and hope God is drawing people to himself. He's calling us to love and to serve the world around us through kindness, offering to pray with others and always being ready to give an answer for the hope that we have. Please keep praying for the world around you, whether it be at 12 noon or at 2020 in the evening, or at 7.14 in the morning, or 7.14 in the evening, as the Unite 714 website is encouraging us all to do, to pray for the miraculous healing of our lands from the coronavirus, and a spiritual awakening among the nations. Amen. Let's live and love like Jesus. And listening to the needs of those around us, respond with kindness and compassion. You know, the world around us is shaking. Someone asked me this week if they if if they thought if, if I thought we were in the last days, referring to the end of the world when Jesus returns. There's a new heaven and a new earth and renewal of all things. That's that wonderful uh, picture 
of the new heaven and new earth in Revelation. Do you know for 2000 years since Jesus resurrection, ascension, we've been living in the end times. Only God the Father knows when that day will be. But as I come to a close now, how should we live in these last days? Well, Jesus tells a story in Matthew 25 of the 10 bridesmaids who wait for the bridegroom to turn up. First, uh, five of them fill their pots of oil ready and waiting for the bridegroom to appear, to light the way. The other five don't do that and they live with the consequences. The first five get ready and they look out for the bridegroom, listening out uh, for the arrival and they get to go to the wedding banquet. The other five don't prepare, they don't get ready and the door is shut on them. And the bridegroom says to them those challenging words, I don't know who you are. My friends, one thing is certain. We always need to be ready for Jesus' return. We need to be watching out for signs of his arrival and we need to make sure he knows who we are. How? By recognising who he is and asking him to come and help us to turn our anxiety away through his love and give us hope to cleanse us and to rescue us by helping us to turn from distractions, pointing out idols in our lives where we've given our whole self to, our worship to, and turning to Jesus. Friends, God is calling you and I to return to him. as only a parent can do, who has lost to, lost a child. That agony, that is the agony that God the Father has as he looks down at his world and says, return to me, return to me, come home. It's time to come home. And my prayer is that in these days, faith will burn like a fire in you, afresh, anew, brightly again. And a church will flourish in your home and in your street. And there'll be many churches flourishing in your street and in our streets in the days ahead. Be ready. Be watchful. Be prepared and make sure he knows your name. Let's pray. We're going to take a moment of quiet now and invite God's spirit to be very present with us. I want to encourage you not to look at the screen now, just to, but to, to literally shut your eyes. And if you want to, to put your hands out in front of you as a way of saying, I, I want to receive afresh God's Holy Spirit. I want to be open to God today. So let's take a moment of quiet. Come, Holy Spirit. We ask you to fall afresh on us. Let's just wait. Invite Jesus to learn your name. Say, here I am to him.
take a moment to ask God to investigate your heart so there's nothing getting in the way of your connection with him. There's something getting in the way. Perhaps he's whispering about something or somebody you need to forgive. Well, just say, Father, please help me to turn around. Come fill me with your Holy Spirit now. I turn to you. Why don't you ask God to speak to you now? To give you a word for another person, perhaps. In your family, could be a friend, could be one of those people you are praying for on a regular basis. A word to comfort to strengthen, to encourage them. Come, Holy Spirit. And what is God saying to you today? Imagine him gazing at you right now what does he say take time to write down that word in your journal somewhere you're not going to lose it if God has spoken to you about somebody you're praying for. Make sure you let them know. God wants to welcome each of us to return to him. Come home. Come home. May you know his love. May you know his peace. May you know the quietening of your heart. as you entrust your cares and anxieties to him right now. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen.
Good morning, everyone. This is the um, Osayande family. We have been going to St. John's for about five years now. I'm Hope. This is Osa. This is Jesse, and this is Jaden. We're just going to pray now. But before we pray, if um, Jesse would read John chapter 14, verse 27 for us, please. Peace is what I leave with you. It is my own peace that I give you. I do not give it as the world does. Do not be worried and upset. Do not be afraid. Amen. Amen. This is what Jesus said before he left. Basically, he's giving us peace for every season. Good times, bad times, lockdowns, during isolation, anytime. Jesus has given us his peace. So that's what we're going to pray about this morning. Also, we'll pray first. Amen. First, I'll be praying for the children as they are learning in a new way. Father, we thank you for the kids. We thank you for the opportunity for them to learn in a different way. Lord, we pray for peace in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray your peace upon the children. We pray your peace upon the teachers. We pray that you grant the teachers wisdom to convey this new way of learning and you grant the kids the understanding for them to be able to understand this new season of learning in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let your peace be in our educational system. Let your peace be upon the kids. Let your kids peace be upon the teachers in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I commit unto you those that are single or isolated and or feeling lonely. I pray that you will wrap your arms around them and they will know you as God Emmanuel. And God, I pray for those that are struggling financially with their work and lots of uncertainty. I pray that they will know you as Jehovah Jireh, the, ones that, the one that provides for every season. I pray that we will know your peace in our hearts, in our homes, and in every area of our lives, even in this lockdown. Amen. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Jaden? Lord, I pray that you will help all the children and everyone who needs help. I pray for the NHS mm -hmm. and the doctors and the people who are, have the virus and I pray that they will recover. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Lord, I pray for everyone in this lockdown. I pray for that you'll keep us healthy and safe and that you'll keep will keep us healthy and ready for ready for anything. Lord, I also pray for all healthcare services. Mm -hmm. People who are, fe are feeling spiteful and hurt, I pray that you will be there for them. Amen. And you will always be there for us 
as communities and as individuals. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, we're going to pray the Lord's Prayer together. Hallelujah. Ready, steady. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Bye. Thank you. Bye.
before we go, let me remind you of Andy's word to us today. Be watchful, be ready and prepared, and make sure God knows your name. And now for our final blessing. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you in all that you may need to walk through today, this week and evermore. Amen.